What is going on? Welcome to the episode. Today we're covering how to lose fat without losing muscle. Or in other words, how to lose fat while maintaining your current level of muscle mass. And there are two key considerations that we'll be delving into, which are of course nutrition and training. I'm also going to share the three most common mistakes that I see folks making in regards to this specific goal. Let's start with the nutrition piece. As you well know, in order to lose fat, we must be in a calorie deficit, meaning we must expend more energy than we take in. And a super simple way to think about this is via a budget. So let's say that you make $5,000 per month, but you only spend $4,000. And so you have a surplus of $1,000 monthly to put into your savings account. Now, just sub out money for calories in this equation, and this would be an example of gaining body fat because you are taking in more calories than you are expending. Now, if you make $5,000 per month and you spend $5,000 per month, you are going to break even or maintain your current weight. And then lastly, if you make $5,000 per month and you spend $6,000 per month, you're making less than you are spending or eating fewer calories than you are burning and therefore you will lose fat. When you are spending more than you are making, you need to dip into your savings account in order to make up the difference, right? And in this case, your savings account is your stored body fat. We have to give our body a reason to burn stored energy, aka our savings. And that reason is eating fewer calories than we burn. That is fat loss in a nutshell. The other nutritional consideration that we need to stay aware of in the context of maintaining muscle is our protein intake. And I would recommend getting roughly one gram per pound of your body weight or one gram per pound of your ideal or target body weight. And then feel free to fill in the remainder of your calorie intake via carbohydrates and fat depending on your personal preferences. And I would recommend getting as many of your food sources, so proteins, carbs, and fat, from single ingredient whole foods. Okay, so that is big picture nutrition boxed off. Now let's delve into the training aspect. In order to maintain your current level of muscle mass, it is crucial that you continue to lift equally as heavy as you are now. And this brings up our first mistake. So many folks decide that they want to lose fat, and so they think, well, I better lift lighter weights for more reps, right? Wrong. That is a recipe to lose muscle because you built that muscle with specific amounts of resistance to begin with. And so, of course, applying less resistance is going to cause muscle loss. Just like the body needs a reason to burn stored body fat, which is a calorie deficit, the body also needs a reason to maintain muscle mass. And so if we remove that reason by lifting lighter weights, of course we're going to lose muscle because we're literally telling the body, I no longer need the muscle required to lift those heavier loads. The second mistake that I see folks making in regards to losing fat and maintaining muscle is actually just an inaccurate assessment of their body composition. For example, for men, when they're losing fat, they often believe that they are also losing muscle because we accumulate body fat literally everywhere. And so men tend to look at their chest, arms, and shoulders and notice that these areas are getting visually smaller despite sustaining an adequate level of training, i.e. they're lifting the same weights. 
And the harsh truth is that what they thought was muscle mass was actually just body fat. The first time that I got reasonably lean, I experienced this. It was sobering, to say the least. I thought that I was carrying a lot more muscle than I actually was, because once I stripped some of that body fat off, I was performing equally as well, if not better, in the gym, but my muscles didn't appear to be as big without all of that fat layering over them. For women, when they're losing fat, they often believe that they are losing muscle in their legs and glutes specifically. And again, we accumulate body fat everywhere. And so a lot of women will find that their legs are kind of skinny and their bums begin to flatten out as they get leaner and leaner. And if you've noticed this and your maintenance level training box is ticked, meaning you continue to lift equally as heavy for the same number of reps in the gym, that was body fat, not muscle. Now, the ironic thing is, is that if you continue to get leaner and reach, say, that 10 to 15-ish percent body fat for men, and maybe 16 to 20-ish percent for women, you often then begin to look more muscular again. It tends to be that middle ground body fat percentage that's a bit of a no man's land in the sense that you're not quite lean enough to look lean, but you've also lost enough fat that it appears as though you don't have a ton of muscle either. Now, if you're a man and you're finding that you actually have less muscle than you thought, just like I did, no sweat. You can just train with more weight and or more volume and build those muscles up. And if you're a woman and you're finding that your legs and butt aren't quite what you thought that they were, no problem, because you can squat, lunge, deadlift, hip thrust, etc. with more weight and or more volume and build your lower body up. That brings us to our third mistake, which is reducing calories so aggressively that your performance goes to shit. Or in other words, You're not able to maintain your gym performance, and therefore, muscle loss occurs not because you're not eating enough protein, but because you drop your calories so low that you simply don't have the energy required to lift as heavy, as often, with as much volume as necessary, etc. Now, like we chatted about in the nutrition portion, we need a calorie deficit to lose fat. However, We don't want that deficit to be so severe that it impacts our ability to maintain an adequate level of performance via our training. Truth be told, this third mistake isn't nearly as common as the first two just because when folks reduce their calories that aggressively, they tend to just feel horrible and therefore it's very difficult to adhere to. So then, They just increase their calories to something more moderate in terms of their calorie deficit, and everything just sorts itself out. So to sum things up, nutrition. Create an appropriate calorie deficit that allows you to lose fat while simultaneously maintaining your resistance training performance. Also, be sure to eat enough protein. Training. Continue to lift equally as heavy. Don't start lifting lighter weights for a million reps because that will result in muscle loss regardless of your nutritional approach. Also, assessment-wise, if you are maintaining your training performance, which you should be, you are not losing muscle. You are losing fat. And the reality is, is that you might have less muscle than you thought that you did. But it is all good because you can just build more. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. If you'd like to, feel free to leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow me on Instagram at n1fitness, on TikTok at the n1fitness, and on YouTube at marcussidu slash n1fitness. If you'd like to stay up to date on the newest episode releases, you can hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope 
that you found this episode useful, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya! Thank you.